good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for being here again. This is week three. It's uh, still uncomfortable, but we are here and we're doing it. And uh, we're thankful that you guys are able to jump in uh, with us this morning. And just like I said last week, we really want this to be, continues to be a time of unity, of community, of allowing us just to be able to be together, even though we're in separate homes, to be together as one, which is why we do this live uh, every week. Um, also, now something a little different, what we'd like for you to do is, if you're with your family or even if you're by yourself, it doesn't matter. Um, if you would like, take a photo of maybe you guys watching the live stream and then send it to me. Uh, we may put it on later on in the service, but um, we just want to see how you guys are doing. It's been a long time since we've seen, seen your faces. But send it to me. You can send it to my email at grantharrison at epicchurch.org. If you have my number, you can do that. I'm not going to put my number out there just because, you know, who knows who's going to see this. But, uh, but go ahead and uh, you can email that to me. And uh, we'd love to maybe put that up there um, just to kind of let us be like, hey, guys, other people are here. Other people are doing this or watching this. Even our chat on YouTube, you can go ahead and do that and, and chat with one another. Um, it just gives us a sense of unity as we walk through all of this. But, uh, but this morning, uh, we are continuing our Christ of Formity series. We're going to be talking about the cross this morning. We're going to talk about what the cross means to us as followers of Jesus. And uh, we're going to be singing about that. Now, we're going to be singing first is we're going to be singing a little bit about how he has been faithful to us. No matter the mountain high, valley low, he has been faithful to us um, through all of it. And uh, we're going to be singing about that truth together. And then we're going to sing a new song, which uh, may be ill-advised for an online service, but uh, we just couldn't come away from this song. We just kept going back to it, and so we're going to sing it. It's called Hallelujah for the Cross. I hope that you know it. If not, that's okay. You can still learn it and sing it uh, in your houses with your family or alone, and uh, just sing it to the Lord uh, together. Uh, and then we're going to, have to spend some time just being able to praise Him, to lift Him up, to uh, remind ourselves that He's the one that's worthy of our praise. He's the one that's worthy of our worship. And so uh, we lift him up alone. So uh, thanks again for joining us this morning, and let's um, let's sing together. We're heaven's fun creation. His pride in adoration, treasures woven by His love. His careful hands, they hold us safe within His promise of calling and of destiny. Let's do that again. We're heaven's spawn creation, His pride in adoration, treasures woven by His love. His careful hands, they hold us safe within His promise of calling and of destiny. And I will sing of all You've done, and I'll remember how far You've carried me from beginning. Until the end, you are faithful, faithful to the end. A father's heart that's for me, a never ending story of love that's always chasing me. This kindness overwhelming, a hope for me, an end. He's never given up on me. And I will sing of all you've done. And I'll remember how far you've carried me from beginning until the end. You are faithful, faithful to there wasn't a day that you weren't by my side. There wasn't a day that you let me fall. In all of my life, your love has been true. With all of my life, I will worship you. 
we sing this next song, like I said, it is a new one for us, but just allow the Lord to remind you what the cross means to you. What Jesus' sacrifice has done for us as a people. He has freedom. He has conquered sin. He has conquered death. And we are his children. He will take care of us. He is with us. And one day we will live with him. So as we sing this, just keep those truths in mind and allow the Lord to maybe even sing this truth over you this morning. I would be hopeless without your goodness. I would be desperate without your love. Slave to the darkness if it wasn't for the cross. You have won me with your kindness. Chase me down when I was lost. Where would I be if it wasn't for the cross? Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I was a prisoner, now I'm not. With your blood you bought my freedom. Hallelujah for the cross. All my shame was met with mercy. Now your mercy will be my song and oh the glory oh the power of the cross and hallelujah thank you Jesus I was a prisoner and now I'm not with your blood you but my freedom, hallelujah, for the cross. And by your stripes I'm healed, by your death I live. The power of sin is overcome, it is finished, it is done. By your stripes I'm healed, and by your death I live. The power of sin is overcome, it is finished, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, I was a prisoner and now I'm not. With your blood you bought my freedom, hallelujah, for the cross, hallelujah. Amen. 
It all revolves around your throne. Who can know your glory? So high above, yes, slain for us, you alone are holy. And the praise is yours, and the praise is yours. You're the one we bow before, reigning over us as we lift you up. You will reign The one who was and is to come, God of every moment, forever crowned, exalted now, you alone are holy, and the praise is yours. And the praise is yours, you're the one we bow before, reigning over us as we lift you up, you will reign. Praise, power, and strength. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Alleluia. And glory and praise, power, and strength. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Alleluia. yours and the praise is yours you're the one we bow before reigning over us as we lift you up you will reign forevermore and the praise is yours and the praise is yours, you're the one we bow before, reigning over us as we lift you up, you will reign. Oh, Father, we do sing with one voice and heart this morning as we are now scattered across this city, maybe a few people across this country. We are singing this truth. We are proclaiming who you are, the one who is, was, and is to come. You are with us. You are near we pray that your spirit speaks through your word this morning. Allow our hearts and ears to be open. And we pray that you continue to mold and shape our community wherever you have us. We pray through the spirit, by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Thank you, Grant. Well, good morning, Epic Church. There is a lot that you can't control right now in your life and in your world. Of course, you've never been in control anyways, but there's one thing that you can control in the midst of all this chaos that's surrounding us right now, and that is how you respond to the crisis. You can control your outlook, your attitude, and your focus. You don't have to choose to be cynical during these trying times. Instead, you can choose to be hopeful. Kerry Newhoff says, Cynicism begins not because you don't care, but because you do care. When life hits you hard, and it's hitting us all hard right now in many ways, You can't help but wonder what gives. What's happening around me? What's happening to me? What's happening in me? Why is it that I'm feeling as if I'm drifting towards this sense of cynicism? Well, I'll tell you what's happened. A crisis of global proportions, that's what's happened. However, this doesn't mean that you have to be hopeless. It doesn't mean that you have to become a cynic. You don't even have to allow your circumstances to determine your perspective. When facing intense seasons of life, like the one we all find ourselves in right now, there's typically one of two extremes that you take. You either become more cynical or more hopeful. If your hope is in Jesus, then when tragedy strikes, you have a reason to be hopeful. What about you right now? Are you feeling as if you're becoming more cynical or more hopeful? This morning, we'll see both extremes at the cross, the cross of Jesus, in between two criminals. And what we'll find out is that you don't have to lose hope. You see, currently here at Epic Church, we are in a sermon series that we're calling Christoformity. And Christoformity is rooted in Jesus' own words and life. The goal of Christoformity is not to just believe the gospel, while that's important, it's to embody it. Christoformity is what happens as we participate with Christ. And as we rapidly approach Easter, which is only two weeks away, I might add, it's really important that we use the remainder of our time together in this series to focus on the final movements of Christ, His first coming. That we focus on the final days of His life, His death, His resurrection, and His ascension. There's so much jam-packed into the final days of Jesus' earthly ministry, and while we don't have time to go into great detail, we do have enough time to slow down and reflect upon the significance of each of these events. And so for this morning, I want us to talk about the cross. While in many ways the cross and resurrection go hand in hand, if we're not careful, we'll be tempted to neglect one or the other. And so with that said, let's turn our attention to a portion of Luke's crucifixion account in the Gospel of Luke. Let's see what this text has to say to us about hope. Hope that is found at the foot of the cross. Now, it's John's Gospel that's typically thought of in this way. But Luke's gospel is also a remarkable combination of both the simple and the profound. In fact, one commentator writes, Luke presents his gospel account in such a simple, unadorned, and unsensational way, and yet at the same time he weaves into it some profound textures of understanding and scriptural meaning. And so even with a surface reading, you can get to the point of what Luke is trying to tell us. And then we have a chance to go deeper to see some significance of what Luke is trying to say to us. But why don't you hear our text this morning? Good morning, Epic Church. My name is Rachel McCrary, and our scripture this morning is from Luke 23, verses 32 through 33 and 39 through 43. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him, aren't you the Messiah? Save yourselves and us. 
But the other criminals rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you were under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The gospel truth is found in this short account. Jesus was innocent of all wrongdoing. He was executed unjustly. But he died forgiving his enemies. He died promising eternal life to a repentant sinner. And he died to save even those who said he couldn't save himself. What a powerful text. As you look deeper below the surface... Luke also invites us to see even more truths that challenge us and encourage us. And I want to point out two of these truths that you can see as you look deeper into this text. The first one I want you to see is the necessity of aligning your life, your entire life, around the crucified way of Jesus. And second, I want you to see the unrivaled grace that Jesus offers you. All of this takes place on the cross in between two criminals. It seems, based on Matthew and Mark's account, that at first both of these criminals next to Jesus ridicule him. But, near the end of their time on the cross, one of them has a change of heart. And in the end, the two criminals being executed on either side of Jesus have two very different reactions to his crucifixion. One criminal draws near to Jesus, while the other criminal pushes him away. In case you haven't noticed, tragedy has a way of changing our relationship to God. Tragedy has a way of drawing us closer to God or pushing us further away from God. Usually it's one extreme or the other. In this text, we see both cases. One criminal rejects Jesus while the other trusts him. Let's take a little bit of a closer look at each of these responses from these criminals. And let's start with the one who rejects Jesus. The unrepentant criminal probably had a very practical view of religion and the gods. It's as if he thought to himself, I need things in in this case to be saved from death. And if this God, lowercase g, Jesus, can't do the job, then I'll move on to another option. You see, the first criminal wanted something from Jesus, pure and simple. He wanted a God that would serve him, meet his needs, his expectations, and fill his desires. He wanted a self-serving God. Now, while you may not be able to relate to rejecting Jesus to this degree, since many of you listening are likely in a relationship with Jesus, it doesn't mean that you still don't attempt to fit Jesus into a box your own box. Most of us can relate to this struggle, the one of seeing God for who we want Him to be, who we expect Him to be, instead of seeing Him for who He truly is, our crucified Lord. We'll talk more about that next week. But do you struggle with this in any way? Do you find yourself like this unrepentant criminal, expecting Jesus to cater to your needs, serve your agenda, meet all your expectations? It's tempting. Do you find yourself expecting Jesus to be someone he's not? When Christ came to serve and give his life as a ransom, he didn't give his life for your mission. He came to rescue you and show you the true way to live this thing called life. The upside down way of the cross, which if you think about it, is really the right side up way of life. Christ knows the way to true life And for him to compromise this way of life for your selfish needs or desires would be a travesty. Even if it means discomfort, suffering, or loss for you. Like it or not, in order for us to experience the resurrected life, we must first experience the crucified life. Trusting him, dying to ourselves, and laying our lives at the foot of the cross. You serve a crucified Lord. Which means, like Christ, your life will be marked by service, humility, sacrifice, surrender, and even suffering. 
Any attempt to subvert this way of reconciliation will only lead to more brokenness and eventually a dead end. Which is why when you take matters into your own hands, you always end up empty-handed. Any path other than the crucified way of Christ falls short. Yet while you're in this life, again, remember, you will experience trouble, tragedy, and tribulation, as John reminds us. But you can trust that as a child of God, you are not alone, you are loved, and you are secure in the hands of Almighty God. Everything else is fool's gold. The unrepentant criminal that wanted Jesus to fit into his mold had an idea of what he thought power in life was all about. And he was willing to die for that way of life. He had already formed his concept of how life worked. If you look in the scripture that we just heard Rachel read, aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. Sadly, all that he'd ever dreamed about was dying on the cross with him. And even sadder is the thought that he was cursing the one hope that was sitting, or excuse me, on the cross right next to him. You see, the hope of the world was right next to him. This unrepentant criminal, probably even at times staring hope in the face, failed to notice. In fact, while this wretched man was in his darkest hour, Jesus was beside him praying, praying for him, offering him forgiveness, and offering him a future. But he was so caught up in his crushing circumstance that he didn't see that all that he had longed for was right in front of him. As for the second criminal, he finally gained a firm grasp on reality. He had a different approach. He took a different path. Tragedy has a way of waking you up if you'll listen. This criminal knew and recognized that he was guilty And he knew that Jesus was not guilty. He confessed his sin and he awaited his fate. Now, if we're being honest, it does seem a little crazy to think that this undeserving ex-con should get a last-minute pardon. Would you have shown this sort of grace? And what could this man possibly offer Jesus in exchange for a home in paradise? Absolutely nothing. But that's the point. Jesus' love for us does not depend on what we're able to do for Him. Did you hear that? Let me say it again. Jesus' love for us doesn't depend upon what we're able to do for Him. This repentant criminal didn't claim to be innocent. He didn't blame others for his wrongs. He didn't offer excuses. He simply admitted that he has nowhere else to go apart from Jesus. And so his request is simple. Remember me. Typically, you don't realize Jesus is all you need until Jesus is all you have. And that was the case for this man. Jesus answers his simple request with a promise. I tell you the truth. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Jesus promises him paradise, a place of life, rest, peace, and fellowship with God. Jesus promises a convicted criminal a home in the presence of holy God. He could die this day in peace, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection, as it says in the book of Common Prayer. Knowing that he was among the righteous, the saved, those who would share in the Messiah's reign. In spite of all the sin, the wrongdoing, and the crimes that this man had committed, and which he had just confessed he was guilty of, his future was safe, safe in the hands of Jesus, whom he had just acknowledged as king. So why was this wretched man saved? Why was he spared? Why was he given a hope and a bright future? It's because he trusted in the crucified way of Jesus. He was assured of his salvation by the promise that Jesus himself offered. We'd all be wise to follow this simple example of faith. That if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart 
that Jesus is Lord, Lord of all, you will be saved. So what's this mean for you and I? Well, for starters, I want to ask you a question. Have you been reconciled with Christ? Have you confessed your sin and turned from this world and the wicked ways of the evil one, from your selfish ways? Have you instead embraced the way of the cross? If not, now is as good of a time as ever. As we all face a global crisis, it should cause us to pause and reflect. To reflect upon the fact that we live in a fragile and broken world, one in which we are not in control. There's no need to become a cynic. There's hope. And hope has a name. Jesus. If you haven't trusted Jesus as Lord of all, I want to urge you and plea with you to talk to someone today. You can text, email us. All of our information's online. Maybe there's a family group leader that you have. Someone you know that has a relationship with Jesus. Don't miss this opportunity. The invitation and calling is there. Second, not only do we have a chance to be reconciled with Christ, but I want you to think for a moment about your current situation. Do you ever get frustrated or even angry when God isn't who you want Him to be? I know many of you would say that you believe God is your only hope. But when tragedy strikes, you can't help but feel like God is disappointed in you or pushing you away or maybe He's straight up forgotten about you. Do you ever feel this way? Do you feel this way right now? Well, from a global scale, I can't help but think there are many in this world today in light of the coronavirus who feel isolated abandoned, and alone. In fact, this pandemic has us all standing at a crossroad. Like the two criminals on the cross next to Jesus, we're all being forced to think about our future. In fact, for many who have COVID-19, their lives are literally hanging in the balance. People all over the world are suffering and dying alone because of this virus. And these people need to know that God is suffering right there with him. That's what the cross teaches us, is that they need to know Christ knows what they're going through. He knows what it feels like to be abandoned. They need to know that the Spirit provides God's presence, deep comfort, and a peace that passes all understanding. They need to know that while death is inevitable, resurrection is available. It's available to everyone who puts their trust in Jesus. These people who are suffering need to know about the good news of Jesus. And we need to pray for these people. And if at all possible, we need to tell these people the name of hope. And that name is Jesus. Lord, have mercy. On an even more personal level, perhaps, it's important for you to remember that in the midst of this crisis, God is more concerned about your character than he is your comfort. He's more concerned about your faithfulness than your financial status. He's more concerned about your holiness than he is your happiness. And he's more concerned about your needs than he is your wants. This doesn't mean that God loves you any less. And actually, it means that he loves you more than you might understand. He doesn't just think, This is what you might need. He knows what you need. He knows better than to just let you get your way when he knows that his way is best. So in the midst of your life being turned upside down, trust in the way of the cross. Come to the foot of the cross. Don't turn away from Jesus and become a cynic. Turn to Jesus and receive the hope of the world. One specific way you can lean into Jesus during these crazy times is by using any extra time that you have to create some spiritual practices, rhythms that push you towards Jesus, that draw you closer to Him. 
For instance, perhaps a rhythm of prayer at 9, noon, and 5. Typically the times we eat. Use those times not to just rush through a prayer, but to pause with those around you. Or even calling or texting someone, FaceTiming someone, to, as one, pray. Spend time with the Lord. Intercede on the behalf of others. And allow the Spirit to express in groans that we can't even speak of. The heart of what is taking place in your life and the lives of those around you. And in the midst of this time of prayer, perhaps that you can gain, dig into God's Word. Have a psalm for the day that you read each time that you pray. Center your heart and life around Christ, especially in these times of tragedy, when it feels as if you're abandoned. But That's when faith is most needed. And that's when we need to know that resurrection is coming. Remember, followers of our crucified Lord are led to the cross to die. But that path leads to hope and to resurrection. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Pray with me. Almighty God, we have all kinds of thoughts running and racing through our heads and minds right now. So many emotions that we're feeling. And in the midst of this crisis, we ask that starting with ourselves, you would do a work to draw us near to you. That you would cast out all fears as we cast our burdens upon you. That you would increase our faith. That you would strengthen us. Strengthen our frame. Would you forgive us where we failed you? Would you allow us to hear your call to follow you and to trust you wholeheartedly? Because come what may, even death itself, we know that we have a hope. I'm going to end with, uh, with a hymn real quick. And uh, Nathan just uh, alluded to it. We feel like trust in Jesus might be the most appropriate hymn for us uh, to end for this morning. so sweet to trust in Jesus and to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise and to know the saith the Lord Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I've proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. It is sweet to trust in Jesus Just from sin and self to cease Just from Jesus simply taking Life and rest and joy and peace Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him How I fruit him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, 
glad I learned to trust him and I'm so glad I learned to trust him precious Jesus save your friend and I know that he is with me will be with me to the end Jesus Jesus how trust him, how I threw him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him. Let's sing this chorus one more time. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I threw him more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Father, we do trust You. We put our faith, our hope in You alone. If anything, this world is showing us more and more that You are the only one that we can lean on. You're the only one that we can look to. Father, we pray for protection. We pray for safety. Most importantly, we pray that we are living in your presence and by your spirit. So Father, as Epic Church is a community who desires to be shaped by you, continue to do so. Continue to mold us. Continue to make us more like you. We pray through the Spirit, by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Before you join me in our responsive prayer, I want to remind us and cause us to remember the people in Jonesboro who had a tornado yesterday, lots of damage, uh, people injured. Uh, let's make sure that we keep them in the foremost part of our minds. Now join me in this responsive prayer. Lord, our prayer is for the end of this global pandemic, for the safety of our health care workers, for our president, Congress, governor and state and local government for those already sick and suffering for those whose lives are being disrupted for those in our community who are at risk for those with no family to take care of them for those with no resources to buy supplies. For those afraid, worried, and panicked. For your church that we can have peace and be a people of peace. For your church that we may love our neighbors. For the coming of your kingdom. Lord of all, we come in recognition of your eternal love, in repentance of our sin, and in hope of the return of Jesus Christ. We are filled with uncertainty. Our hearts bear the weight of the turmoil. As a family, we place once again our trust in you. Grant us peace that we might love you well and love our neighbors as ourselves. We pray all of this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
Thank y'all for watching with us this morning. We had a few of y'all send in pictures, um, and we want to show those to y'all real quick. Um, thank y'all for being committed to gathering with us, even despite the situation we're in. Um, guest, if this is your first time hearing about Epic or watching us online, um, we want to encourage you to visit our website and reach out to us. We'd love to get to know you better, um, so be sure to reach out to us. Um, just a few reminders on how you can give online. Um, you can give through the Church Center app, which you can download through the app store. You can go to our, um, our website, epicchurch.org, and click Give, or you can text your amount to 84321. Um, just a reminder that all of our events um, have been either postponed or canceled, so just uh, stay up to date with us, and we will email you all of that information. Parents, um, I sent y'all um, the lesson, I think, on Friday morning, so be sure to teach your kids. They're learning about um, Jesus as a child, and I'd love to get pictures and videos of your kids learning that lesson. Um, lastly, our, our Epic is, um, it has a cool opportunity to serve some people in our local community. Um, so we can, um, we have some possibilities to serve some local health care workers, maybe by giving them a meal and also serving some foster care families during this time. Um, so we're going to send y'all an email with more information on how we can do that. So just be on the lookout for an email about that. Lastly, we will um, end like we always do with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And lead, not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you all for watching. See you soon.